Hello guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. Uh, we're going to be looking at the development of monitoring and evaluation tools. Okay, that's what we're going to be looking at today. I sure hope you've joined me. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to this channel because on a regular basis, I post updates in relation to M&E. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? Okay, so now this is the outline. First of all, I want to explain what these M&D tools are, why are they important, and how are data collection tools developed, okay? So that's how this structure is going to be. So please take, good ad take advantage of the timestamps in the description below. There won't be any, there won't be many of them, but I'm sure it will help you navigate the video. Okay, so what are M&D tools? Tools are basically instruments that you use to get your job done. So in monitoring and evaluation, these are the instruments that will help us implement M&D activities effectively. So there are two types of tools, M&D tools that are used. You've got the planning tools, and then you've got the data collection tools. So those are the two tools uh, types that are that are used in the M and E. Okay, so now let's talk about the planning tools. So the planning tools are basically the instruments that uh, that help you in the planning phase. Okay, because you know the issue is this: before you can do any M and E activities, you must be able to set the pace. You need to set the foundation. So for those of you who've interacted on this channel and me at a personal level, you recall that the problem and solution tree approach is one way of actually doing the planning. Then you've got the basic approach in the development of key performance indicators. And then you've got the logical framework, framework analysis approach. So these are the, the usually the tools you come across with uh, often, okay? Okay, let's talk about the data collection tools. Now, data collection tools are the instruments used for actual collection of data, all right? And for those of you who've been in M&D for quite some time, you know this. Even for the researchers, if you're a researcher at an institution, you know that some of the data collection tools include the questionnaires, the checklist, key informant interview guides, focus group discussion guides, survey forms, and attendance sheets. So all these help with data collection. Now, why is it important to have these data collection tools? Well, they help with the actual gathering of data. And once you gather this data, you analyze it, report on it, and it becomes information to management. Because remember, management need this in their decision making. Because the way M&D is, is that once they get this information, it will give them an idea of what they should do to correct all matters. Okay, now let me run you through the step-by-step -step approach to de developing data collection tools. Now, I want to emphasize this, guys, that you need to develop these data collection instruments properly. And using this step-by-step -step approach, I'm going to talk to you about. For those of you who've not uh, actually come across this, I wouldn't be too surprised because a lot of the people I meet, they, they don't have a, an idea of how it is actually done. They don't know these steps. Normally what they'll do is if they're coming up with a tool, they will, they will look on the internet, which I also used to do. They'll look on the internet and then copy and paste. But I wouldn't encourage that because it is not effective enough. Okay, so these are the steps. The first step is to list all the indicators in the log frame or the project. So the reason why I've, I've said um, 
the the I've given these two options, whether it's the logical uh, log frame or the project, is because some projects don't even have a log frame. Okay, so it's really important that if there's no log frame, read the project document carefully to identify the indicators. Then step two is to determine the type of data required. Okay, so there are different types of data. You've got primary data. So primary data is that data that you collect yourself or as an institution, you have the ownership to that data. Secondary data on the other end is data that is not collected directly by you, but you use other people's work. Okay, that is secondary data. You've got quantitative data, which is numerical, and then you've got qualitative data, which is basically the type of data which is non-numerical. And the best way to describe this kind of data is uh, by basically, if you go and ask people questions, open-ended questions that require their own perceptions, that's qualitative data. Then step three is to determine the type of data collection method required for each indicator. So the type of data collection method, remember when I, talk, I showed you some tools in the previous slide, but among the methods are, are things like one-on-one -on -one interviews, focus group discussion, key informant interviews. Those are different types of data collection methods even observation. So you have to determine for each indicator which data collection method will you use. Then you've got step four, which is to design the data collection tool. So designing the tool requires that you sit down, you actually, you, you, you can come up with this tool as a team if you want, or you can sit down yourself and design it on your desk. Okay, so design it. Then after you design it, you test it. So the way the testing is done, you have to, you know, when you're testing the tool, you have to make sure that all the indicators in the project are actually in the tool. They are being captured such that if I went and collected data, I know that I'm going to, you know, collect the, the indicators. The next step is to train the staff how to use the tool, okay? They need to be capacitated. Then next, pilot test the tool. The staff you've trained must go in the field and they must actually, um, they must actually go in and test it themselves. So instead of interviewing a big number of people, like if you have 10,000 beneficiaries, ideally you should interview all of them. However, you can actually, when you're doing the pilot testing, you can actually now get a small portion of that. Maybe out of the 10,000, you can just go and interview 10 people because they're just pilot testing. So now based on the way they've interacted with the two, they'll come back to you and tell you that, okay, this tool is like this. You need to make the necessary changes. Certain questions were not well understood. So based on the test results, you make the necessary corrections and then you launch the tool. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate your feedback. I've been your host, Coach Alexander. Unfortunately, for those of you who have the WhatsApp line, Unfortunately, it's down at the moment. So I would want you to write to me using the email in front of you. I've been your host, Coach Alexander, and see you on the other side. Bye.